welcome everybody to the cabinet. is our joint venture known as Edsent, Edsential. Uh, I'm going to deal with this report in the absence of the uh, cabinet member. Um, as colleagues will recall, in November 2014, cabinet approved the uh, setting up of a um, community interest company jointly between ourselves and Cheshire West and Chester Council. This is um, an innovative and ambitious um, new delivery model in terms of it being a commercial company which will operate between the two authorities to deliver a whole range of school services, catering, cleaning, uh, IT, um, outdoor activities to name but a few and um, it will be a profit making organisation but all services will be ploughed back into the um, into the company. Um, what cabinet colleagues have before them this evening is a revised business plan on, based on revised assumptions in terms of the uh, profit and um, the, the turnover and a number of issues around uh, other um, responsibilities that Essential will take over, including uh, redundancy costs uh, from the local authority. So. Um, you know, absolutely delighted with this. Um, and you know, this is, as everybody knows, have heard me banging on about alternative service delivery models. And what this is about for me as well is about not only securing top quality services for our schools, um, because as we know, schools are operating in a commercial environment now and are able to look to buy, uh, look for better value for money. Um, but also, 1,200 staff between the two authorities are going to see their jobs. Uh, secured into the future on this, so uh, this is a very exciting, uh, you know, first step for us into the commercial world of having a jointly owned company. Um, the recommendations on this, colleagues, um, are set out at page eleven. Now, before I move to the recommendations, does anybody want to come in? Okay, so um, you will have read the uh, report, you know what the differences are and the assumptions between the business case that we received in November 2014 and the business plan that's presented before us this evening. Um, and the recommendations are that we, we ask note and approve the difference in the assumptions between November 2014 and the business plan now and we progress to the establishment of a community interest company limited by shares and jointly owned by Wirral and Cheshire West and Chester Councils for the purpose of providing the services identified in the business case to schools in both councils areas and outside using the powers delegated on the 6th of November uh, cabinet report as, a de as detailed at appendix 1. Is that agreed? Thank you. Moving on to agenda item four, I'll just give Stuart a moment to leave. Okay, agenda 
item four is uh, building more housing on brownfield land. Seeking, this report is seeking members' approval to establish a register of brownfield sites suitable for residential development and where relevant to develop local development orders on identified suitable sites. I'm going to hand over to Pat, Councillor Pat Hack. Thanks, Pat. Thank you, Chair. As you rightly said, this report seeks to establish a register of brownfield uh, sites suitable for residential development and to develop local development orders to permit development for housing and identify suitable sites. Uh, as you can see here, approval will support the delivery of more houses in line with the Wirral uh, vision which sets the objective of building 3,500 uh, new homes by 2020 and will help to demonstrate the Council's commitment to support urban regeneration. Uh, it's proposed that the list of sites in appendices uh, 1 and 2 of this report will form the basis of the first brownfield land register and will be on these sites where appropriate uh, that the first sort of development orders will be made. The list, list of sites uh, will change over time with new brownfield sites being added and development sites being removed from the register when completed. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the level of detail, scope of each, uh, I'll call it uh, uh, LBO, will vary on a site by site basis, and each uh, local development order LBO will be subject to consultation with board members and statutory consultation before it is brought into force. Um, while the report currently recommends, as you can see here, delegation of local development orders to me as cabinet member, further advice has been taken on this matter and as the LBO is effectively a grant of planning permission, it is proposed uh, that all orders should be confirmed by the planning committee. The planning committee already has the power chair to make determinations, give approvals and certain other matters relating to the exercise of permissive development rights and therefore because of this, no change is required for the Council's constitution. Although there is a risk that development may still not be delivered on some of the more challenging sites, putting local development orders in place will help to reduce uncertainty for developers and should support housing delivery. Although the Council has, uh, will, sorry, will have to fund the preparation of a uh, LDO or floods, the Council should be able to recover most of these costs through charging uh, for confirming compliance with the order before development can take place. A failure, Chair, to grant that permission on 90% of suitable ground land by 2020 uh, also could lead to, government, to the government to remove the council's ability to determine planning applications on ground sites. <coughs> Chair, given these comments, that I've just mentioned and uh, said, I need to, to move a revised recommendation uh, to this report, uh, which is slightly different to the one on the previous report, as I say. Can I say that now? Just uh, point out to us, we've got recommendations one to six here. Are you, are you adding the recommendation or amending any one of them? Um, amending. Which um, one? Yeah. Or, or whatever. Can I go through with the revised recommendation and you can see quite clearly I'll mention it, uh, how different that is from uh, it's slightly it's, it's only slightly different from, from the other reports. Uh, one, uh, cabinet approves the establishment of a register of suitable ground field sites for housing development on the basis of the sites listed in appendix one and appendix two to this report. So that, but that's that's all the same here. Okay. Uh, two, uh, that the brownfield land register is reviewed every six months by the planning committee and that during this review sites which meet the criteria for brownfield land are added and sites that have been developed are removed. Um, okay. Three, that an up-to-date version of the register including site plans is published for a public inspection on the council's website. Four, I did, this is one of the chairs, I did this. Oh, so I'm saying. That the 
CAM is authorised to head of regeneration and planning to prepare the local development orders for sites identified on the register as appropriate in consultation with ward members and undertakes consultations on these as set out in the national legislation. And five, that the head of regeneration and planning reports the draft local development orders and the outcome of the consultation to the planning committee as opposed to the which will determine the final uh, adoption of an order. And six of this report is referred to the planning committee for noting as opposed to me. So it's just basically changing it from uh, delegating it to me to the planning committee. And I've got a copy of that here, which I'll hand you if we can agree with you. Okay, just before we ask approval, and I know there's more to come in. Ben. Um, I'm, I'm I'm glad to see there's been relevant changes in the plan committee that are going to be involved and that the local councillors are going to be involved. We just need to ensure that with this, um, local councillors and, and planners have an insight into what's been built and that we have a say in what's going to be built on these brownfield sites. So I think uh, I welcome the changes to the recommendations um, and we look forward to seeing how it goes forward. We're, we're, we're going to, We've got to absolutely complete what we need to complete in the way of house building and, and, and accommodation in the world and, and we've got to get on with it and get on with it as quickly as possible. So I hope this speeds up the, pro uh, the projects and speeds up the process. I just want to ensure that um, the houses and the flats and that, that are being built are yeah. suitable for the areas and that all local councils will be involved in the process. Yeah, just uh, along with delegation uh, passing to the So, can we agree those amended recommendations? Agreed. Okay, thank you. Agenda item five is under my own. Oh, sorry. sorry. <coughs> Um, 
um, you know, number of staff we've, we've undertaken to do the performance management and appraisals. There is an action plan, a management action plan in here um, for the strategic leader te leadership team to work with managers um, and improvements are expected in the second quarter as a result from that. So again, I hope we're bringing back an improving picture to you in the next quarter. Um, the sickness absence target, um, the, the year-end the year projection is that this will be achieved. But I would just like to point out that uh, in terms of absence data, uh, you know, across the piece with our statistical neighbours, the rural councils are comparative with other uh, authorities has improved on this this picture, but there's room for improvement on this. Again, it's the first quarter, and a number of initiatives have been put in place um, to work with managers on uh, and employees to and actually to work with departments on wellbeing plans and looking at occupational health as well. Um, and I think what's happened here is that one particular department has skewed the, uh, the kind of figures, statistics on, on this round. So, um, again, uh, you know, although that, that does remain in the you know, a downward, uh, uh, downward trend, at this moment there is a plan in place to pull it back. So I'm hoping that when we come back in quarter two with this, also to say that uh, in terms of you know, performance management indicators, a new suite of those is being developed around the, uh, the rural council plan, and uh, you know it may well be that this this comes in a different different style, different format, or is is looked at in a totally different way going forward. But in the meantime, we'll continue to monitor it. So colleagues are being asked to note and accept this report. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you. Is that agreed? Thank you. Item six is Rock Ferry High School uh, disposal. Adrian, thank you. Excuse me, frog in my throat. Um, something about the background first. The purpose of the report is to provide an update uh, uh, on the previously approved proposal, which is to dispose of the former Rock Ferry High School site. Um, to consider the outcomes of public consultation and to approve the Council's submission to the Secretary of State for Education to allow the site to be used for other purposes. A bit of background, in 2011, Rock Ferry High School and Park High School closed uh, following a review of secondary school provision in Birkenhead, Head and they came together on one site at the former Park High School under the newly formed University Academy of Urban Care. While well, a number of considerations have been given to the Rock Ferry High site, uh, including the formation of the University Technical College, but uh, despite uh, quite a lot of development work, um, uh, these unfortunately couldn't be progressed, and the Council continues to secure and maintain the site at a very significant cost. So in order to change the use of school playing fields or uh, dispose of former school <coughs> premises, a detailed submission to the Secretary of State for Education has to be made. And prior to this submission, uh, public consultation must be carried out uh, along with supporting evidence to go with the submission. Well, the site itself roughly divides into two sections. Um, the first one of Area A, uh, in school buildings, including the listed Ravenswood building and the small playing field, and secondly, area B and C together, the playing fields. Well, the intention, the, the intention had been to market all of the areas for development. Um, however, uh, we are a listening council, and following extensive public consultation, it was evidence that there was uh, a very significant uh, amount of uh, opposition to that proposal. And so a number of options were available, but the one that, the, uh, that, the, uh, that provides um, capital receipt, albeit a reduced amount, uh, and also allows the newly formed Residents Association 
to bring forward alternative uses for the playing field and the woodlands. So this is the option recommended by uh, for, uh, for, for approval. I'll read the recommendations out, although they are printed for those who want to, uh, to take them down. But the recommendations are, firstly, that Cabinet approves the submission of the application to the Secretary of State for Education uh, for the disposal and change of use of the former Rock Ferry High School. Um, secondly, to approve the mixed use option for the site, and that's outlined in 6.4 of the report. Um, thirdly, to approve um, officers to uh, progress uh, development proposals uh, to the site area A for residential development, and that would be in accordance with local planning requirements. And fourthly, uh, to work with the newly formed Rock Ferry Residence Association uh, to bring forward proposals for the management of the site uh, for areas B and C. So that's the, 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 the broad picture, the history of it. I, I think I'm right in saying that the residents are quite pleased that we are taking this um, particular line because the consultation with them is going to be uh, very meaningful and uh, I'm sure it will be done uh, uh, in, in the direction that we want it to. So I move the right recommendations. Thanks, Um, can I just say on um, behalf of, because as you all know, Rock Ferry High School is in my ward, um, we attended four um, slightly heated meetings, um, but I think what it proved is that we've actually listened to what the residents wanted, and we've come back and we've changed the recommendations so that we keep the woodlands and we keep the sports field, and we will be working closely with the association, and we will come forward with ideas, I'm sure, but can I on another note say thank you to the residents of Rock Ferry who all attended the meetings. Um, we did what you asked us to do. We did listen. Um, I hope we proved ourselves to you. But can I also say a big thank you to Jeanette Royal, David Armstrong and David Ball who all attended the meetings. And I'd just like to thank you for your support and for listening to the residents as well. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Good, good that. Thank you, and I'm sure Cabinet would want to endorse those, those thanks for all the hard work that's been put on to this area for a number of times. And it seems as though you know, a sensible solution has been found uh, for a way forward. And, you know, residents have been listened to. Um, uh, Adrian has read out the recommendations of 17.1, 17.3. Can Cabinet agree those recommendations? Thank you. Adrian, it's your game now on gender item 7, the children, your people's new practice schemes. Thank you. Okay. Um, ordinarily, my colleague uh, Tony Smith would be taking the close interest in this, but it falls to me because um, I'm dealing with the, with the actual uh, assets rather than the delivery <coughs> to children. But the, but the background to the report <coughs> is um, it, it details the proposed <coughs> capital schemes which are based on the Department for Education funding allocations and it seeks approval for scheme development. Well, the Department of Education announced in February of this year um, indicative allocations for school condition funding for a three-year period uh, covering the financial years 2015 to 2018. Uh, the, uh, there had been uh, an announcement in 2014 as well, but this is now for a three-year period, and it's advantageous because it means you can actually plan a lot better when you're looking about three years ahead of you. So asset management in consultation with CYPD and now in a much better position to plan the capital program by knowing that the three-year capital allocations are secure and uh, therefore enable a, a much more accurate financial profiling of the anticipated spending. Well, having previously just a one-year allocation has caused restrictions in long-term planning of larger schemes and that's led to delays in program delivery. Uh, for those who are really enthusiastic, they can go to Appendix A because that gives details of schemes which have been assessed 
as requiring capital investment um, using three funding streams. Uh, they are school condition, uh, basic need, and pupil place planning. The three-year capital program will be uh, continue to be developed as um, surveys are undertaken, and particularly when pupil place demands are better known. So additions and amendments will be brought to the attention of members. I'd like to say a little bit about the good news and what's already been achieved. Um, we've successfully delivered a number of schemes already in, in 2015. <clears throat> the new Foxfield School was opened in March 2015. So that was following a £7 million investment. The new Bedford Drive School uh, began in July 2015 and will open in September 2016. Uh, Ridgeway High School will open a year later. And then the larger schemes at Somerville uh, Primary School in Wallasey, at Fender Primary in Woodchurch, at Great Bells Primary in Bells, at Devonshire uh, Park Primary in Birkenhead, at Woodsley Primary in Bromborough, Emily Park uh, in Wallasey, They've all uh, completed or are within a uh, very short um, time of completion. And they've all been very significant construction progress, uh, projects. And of course, the whole object of the exercise is for, for the children. Uh, these projects will enhance the teaching and learning environment, uh, literally for hundreds and hundreds of pupils, um, <coughs> helping to ensure that uh, children are ready for school, uh, the young people are ready for work when they're a bit older, and of course the vulnerable ch ch children are going to reach their uh, full uh, potential. Well, the recommendations are uh, fairly straightforward. The recommendations that cabinet, cabinet approves the new capital schemes identify the appendix A, and we are then to refer them to council for inclusion within the overall capital program. So um, I'd like to um, reiterate what uh, Chris said a moment ago. Our professional officers have done a huge amount of work over the years and um, David and Jeanette and <coughs> Louise, uh, really do need to be um, commended for the, the fantastic amount of work they've been doing. So uh, with that note, I will the recommendation. Thank you. 